Get, get the children a big old clap. Come on, y'all. Praise God for these kids. You know, I thank God. My Lord, I taught kids, y'all, when I was when I got saved, I began to teach the children. And I thank God you teach the children the word. We teach the children the word of God here, y'all. Because when they get old, I don't care if they depart. I don't care if they get in a place they ain't got no business being. Somebody help me. That word that's in them will bring them back. I believe that with all my heart. Can I get an amen up in here? I believe that with all my heart. That's why it's important for us to teach the children. Teach them the word of God. They're not too young. Somebody help me up in here. When I began to teach children, I remember the pastor coming in there and, and this boy saying, are you teaching them that? I said, I certainly am. Teaching the word, church, the word of God, so powerful. I want you to stand on your feet. Let me give you this scripture. Wow. Mm, good Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. We're going to be coming out of 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. But right now, I'm going to read a verse out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Y'all know we've been, uh, God has just put in my spirit to do a series on David. And we're going to be doing that again here today. A series on, on the life of David and what we can learn. But Ephesians 2, 8 says this. It says, for by grace. Everybody say grace. grace. For by grace are you saved. So before you go any further, I know a lot of people think they're working their way into heaven, but I got news for them, nobody is. It's by God's grace, to, by his word, according to his word, it says it's by grace that you're saved. And that's through faith. And then, but so nobody get puffed up or get full of pride, he says, and that's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Now, everybody who's saved and born again here, in here right now, I'm telling you, it's because of God's grace. It's not on account of anything that you or I merited. We better understand that. Today we're going to understand that. And then we're going to see a prime, awesome example of God's grace in the Bible today. Father, I thank you for your awesome goodness, your mercy, your grace, your awesome power. Lord, I thank you for Nicole and what you've done in her life here today. Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, I thank you for every soul, every vessel in this house right now. Lord, I ask that you would touch. Our hearts are ready. I ask that you would put this word into our hearts. Let it saturate on the good ground. Let it spring forth and bring forth much fruit. Lord, even a hundredfold fruit. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Everybody says amen. Give God one more big old clap of praise. Come on, church. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Y'all just praise him for a little bit. I feel the presence of the Lord. My Lord, I, I feel his presence. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Glory, glory, glory. Well, if you can, go ahead and be seated. I'll th tell you what. God's really moving in our praise team. He really is. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, because I think our hearts are just lined up with his and we're just praising God. And it's just so wonderful, isn't it, y'all? Isn't it wonderful to come to a place where you can just praise God? That doesn't really matter. I love it when you can come to a place where you don't have to worry about nobody looking at you. If you want to take off your shoes, you can take off your shoes. In fact, I'm taking mine off right now. Praise God. So I'm comfortable taking my shoes off. Y'all can take y'all's off too. And I don't even have to. I don't even have no holes in my socks, y'all. Praise God. Check it out. Dana makes, I got, I got on good socks today, baby. Hallelujah. No holes in my socks. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Like y'all want to know that y'all even care. Praise God. Y'all, listen, we're going to be talking about grace today. Grace is so important. Uh, without grace, you can just hang it up and forget it. Going home, wouldn't be no need to do anything, all right? But because of God's grace, he saved us, he delivered us, he set us free. And now he's put us in a place where he wants to use us. Now, before I get into 2 Samuel chapter 9, and we're going to relate this story in God's word, this, these true facts about, about King David and about Mephibosheth. Everybody say Mephibosheth. We're going to be talking about Mephibosheth today and the most awesome story of grace in the Bible today, okay? But before we get into it, I want to say this about grace. Grace is really, un, and somebody said it earlier, might have been Caroline, unmerited favor. Everybody say unmerited favor. What that means is God pours his grace out on you. Then he gives you his grace 
It's unmerited favor. In other words, you didn't merit it. Come on, y'all. We didn't merit what God did. It wasn't because we were so good and we was doing everything so right that God poured his grace out on us. That don't have anything to do with it. If you, if you think it is, you just took away from God's grace. His grace is unmerited favor. Extending, let me put it this way, extending favor to someone who doesn't deserve it. That's what grace is, y'all. Giving you something, favor, that you really didn't deserve. I know a lot of people think they deserve to be saved, but they really don't. They have no clue. People have no clue about the holiness of God. God is so perfect, pure, and holy, just the stink of our flesh standing in front of him can't handle it. Come on, y'all. We're, we're born into sin. God is so holy. So it's someone, it's unmerited favor, extending favor to someone who doesn't deserve it, who hasn't earned it, and can never repay for it. You can never pay God back for the grace he's given us. It's impossible. All we can do is what we sung about here this morning. Love him. Adore him. Serve him. Give him all the praise, the glory, and the honor for what he's done in our life. Amen? Now, we're going to see a beautiful story here in chapter 9, 2 Samuel. Look at verse 1. And I want to show you, because a lot of people say, well, you know, God has extended grace to us, but I don't have to extend grace to nobody else. Somebody help me up in here. Whatever God has given you, guess what? We ought to be able to give it out. If I say I'm walking in God's grace, you'll know if I'm really walking in God's grace for what I do for somebody else. Somebody help me up in here. See, we want God. here, Church, here, and, and everybody who comes in these, in these walls, in this sanctuary, my prayer is that when we see God moving and what he's given us, We've got to learn to use that and give it to somebody else. We've got to walk in what God has given us. If we talk about grace, we've got to extend grace. Yes, yes, Come on, yes, somebody help me yes, up in yes. here. If we talk about it, if we preach about it, if we say, hey, I praise God for his grace, God's grace he's put in me. Amen. Well, then we learn to show people grace because he, his grace is flowing in us. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, with that, I want you to look at this, okay? Look at uh, verse 1. David said... Is there any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? If you go back and look at the Hebrew, it will say show him grace for Jonathan's sake. David, think about this for a minute, y'all. David is the king of Israel now. Saul was the first king. We've been talking about that. We've been studying that. King Saul is dead. King David is now the king in Israel. What happens, y'all, when another king comes into play or he's the next king? Most of the time, the other Saul's relatives and all of his descendants, guess what? Most of the time, they'd be killed. They'd be slaughtered because kings were jealous. They didn't want nobody from another lineage, come on, to take their place, to come back in. But see, David is a different kind of king. What have we talked about David, y'all? He has a what? A heart after God. He's got a heart like God. So look at verse 1. Look what he is doing. David says, is there any left? Is there anyone? Is there anyone left that I can show kindness or that I can show grace to? See, he's not acting like some of these other kings. Come on, y'all. And this is important for us because if God's going to really use us, everybody in here, we've got to learn to walk in grace. We've got to learn to do what God wants us to do. Now, here it is. He said, is there anyone? I love this right here, y'all. He does not say, is there anyone qualified? Oh, somebody help me. Oh, good Lord, I've got to get to your spirit. He doesn't say, is there anyone qualified? Is there anyone who deserves my grace? Is there anyone left of the lineage of Saul that is worthy of my grace. Somebody help me up in here. David didn't say none of that. All he said is there anyone left of the lineage of Saul? Because I'm wanting to do what God has put in my heart. Jonathan was a dear friend of mine. Jonathan was, was Saul's son. Jonathan and David were real good friends, okay? 
He's fixing to meet. He's fixing to find out that Jonathan has a son that is alive. Somebody help me up in here. Now, and this son's going to be a little bit worried in a minute. But he's looking for somebody that he can just pour his grace upon. Somebody who don't deserve it. Somebody who's not worthy of it. And when you think about it, church, spiritually speaking, it's the same place that we were in when Jesus found us. Somebody help me. I didn't deserve his grace. I couldn't earn his grace. I wasn't worthy of his grace. But guess what? He extended a hand of grace. Hallelujah. He picked me up out of a miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. He, oh, good Lord. My Lord when, I, when I look at the grace that God extended to this old boy who didn't deserve it. Didn't deserve nothing that God had. But his grace. Now this is what David... He is flowing and he's walking in the grace of God. See, that's what I love when, when God really gets a hold of people. They begin to act like he, like he does. Come on, y'all. When God really gets a hold of somebody, their feelings are somewhere else. Can I get another amen? Let me get my page. My, my things are. Okay, look at verse 2. There was, now listen to this. He said, there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they called, called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are you Zimba? He said, Your servant is he. Look at verse 3, y'all. Here's the key verse. The king said, David said this. He says, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness, or here again, the grace of God unto him? Zimba said unto the king David, Jonathan has yet a son. But look what he puts on the end of that, y'all which is lame on his feet. Now I'm thinking, why in the world is Zimba the servant? Well, yeah, there's one. But David, he's lame on his feet. Do you really want him in your kingdom? Yeah. Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Think about that. Maybe Zimba's thinking, well, David, yeah, there's one left, but he's crippled. He can't even walk. What good is he going to be in your kingdom, David? Well, somebody help me up in here. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Ain't that what we want to do sometimes? We, we try to look at a person's uh, physique. We try to look at where that person is at. Well, this person ain't got no money. We don't want to bring them up in here. They can't help support the church. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Come on, do we ever look? Come on, somebody help me. My Lord, good Lord, help me up in here. See, that's what happens. A lot of people, ju judgmental. Well, I don't, you know, Zimba is trying to show him, hey, man, you don't really need him, David. You better watch what people do, y'all. Let me tell you, we need every soul, every vessel. I don't care where they at. Whoever God wants to bring up in here, praise the name of Jesus. We want them to come in here. We're going to love them. It don't really matter if they got nothing or they got everything. Amen. You don't care if they're a pauper or they're rich. Somebody help me up in here. See, you got to watch what people will try to put in your mind. Here's a servant that said, he said, well, he's crippled. And he's thinking, you know, really, do you really want him in your kingdom around you with all these superstars, David, you got around you? But David didn't have a bunch of superstars around him, did he? He had a bunch of nobodies. Hallelujah. I praise God for it. Hallelujah. He had a bunch of nobodies for you when he was in a cave and God began to work. We've talked about that, amen? Yes. When you realize you're nobody without the Lord, I'm telling you, you're going somewhere. Amen. Now, check this out. I want you to see this right here. He says in verse 4, what's the response of David? David said unto him, where is he? Let's stay out there for a minute. Good Lord. I, I got to thinking about that. David, he's not even responded. He's not responding to what Zimba, the servant, said. He's not, he's, he says, where is he? He don't say, well, how crippled is he? Well, what kind of condition is he in? Come on, y'all. Good Lord. Man. Oh, Lord, y'all just don't know. I've been around a lot of pastors, so I, see, I know a lot of stuff. I know what a lot of pastors look for, which is ridiculous and hogwash. But anyway, it don't matter. David, David is not facing him. He's not even asking what kind of condition the man's in. All he wants to know, where is he? Think about that, y'all. Think about that for a minute. Where is that person outside these walls supposed to be in here right now? 
Where is that person that we're supposed to minister to even right now? Who, where is that person that we're supposed to extend some grace to even right now? Oh, good Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. See, we're talking about grace, y'all. Grace. Grace ain't picky. Oh, grace ain't picky, church. It don't, it don't look for something that is deserving. Oh, Lord, help me on that one. Grace is not looking for someone who deserves it because nobody deserves it. Mm, nobody deserves the kind of grace God has. Come on, hallelujah. Not the kind of grace he has and what he does. Do y'all, oh, God, Lord, help me. I'm in this spiritual place. Y'all can't seem to get out. Lord, grace operates apart, y'all, apart from the response or the ability of anybody. God didn't call you. He didn't give you his grace because you had the ability to do what he told you to do or what he wants you to do. Come on, y'all. That, that ain't got that nothing to do with grace. God's grace is extended to somebody who cannot do yes, what right. God wants them to do. Oh, Lord, help me. Because, because he's saying here, I'm giving you my grace so you can do what I called you to do. Without my grace, you can't do it. Oh, somebody help me up in here. Good Lord. Without my grace, son, forget it. You can't do it. Realize it, church. Without him, we can't do it. We cannot do what God has called us to do without his grace. So what does he do? He extends his grace. He's extending his grace to Mephibosheth, who is crippled, who cannot walk. Let me tell you this about grace, y'all. Oh, Lord, you, maybe you'll love this. Grace is really one-sided. Let me stay there for a minute. Y'all suck that up. Chew on that piece of meat for a minute and I'll explain that. Grace is one-sided. Come on, it's God. It's God giving himself. Listen to me. It's God extending grace to those who don't deserve it, to those who can't earn it, and to those who can never repay it back. Right. Somebody give God a clap of praise up in your heart. You better get that part. Grace is one-sided, y'all. You cannot repay for what God has done in your life. You didn't deserve it. You're not worthy of it. But God says, I'm giving it to you because I got something for you to do, brother. Good Lord, I got a calling on you. I got to give you some grace to get you to the place where I need you to be. See, God's grace always will get you to the place that you need to be. Your works will never do it. It's God's grace. Oh, somebody help me up in here one more time. So, so here's David, y'all. He says, where is he? Look, look at the verse. Let's look at verse four again. He, David said, where is he? Zimba said unto the king, behold, he's talking about my, my, my Phibosheth. He is in the house of Machar, the son of Melia, in Lodenbar. Everybody say in Lodenbar. I guarantee you right now, everybody up in here has been in Lodenbar. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody's been in Logan Bar. Everybody's been in a place where they said, oh, Lord, how did I get here? What's going on, Lord? I don't know why I'm in this, this place of depression, this deserted place. Let me give you a definition here. I want you to look at this, y'all. This is awesome. Low in Hebrew means no. Low, L-O, means what? No. I want y'all to get this in your spirit. You need to know this. Low means no. Good Lord, that's pretty easy, isn't it? Low means no. So if low means no, guess what? The bar means. The bar means this, y'all. If you go back to the Hebrew, no pasture land. Or it means pasture land. The bar means pasture land. Pasture, pasture land. So if you put the low, the bar in front of what do you got? You have no pasture land. You have no place to put your head. You're in a deserted place. You're in a desert place. You're in a place where there ain't nothing growing. There ain't nothing going on. You about to get depressed. You about to get all messed up because you're in this deserted place. Let me tell y'all, this is where Mephibosheth is at. And the thing about Mephibosheth, you got to understand, when he was five years old in the kingdom, King Saul and Jonathan had been killed in the battle. 
The nurse picks up that young five-year-old boy. She begins to run with him. She trips, she stumbles over something, and when she stumbles, she either falls on and pitches him out. But anyway, from five years old, this boy was crippled. From the day she picked him up and went running and fell, Mephibosheth is crippled. He can't walk. So for since he's five years old, and now he's even up in age where Mephibosheth even has a kid. So he's up in years. All this time, y'all, he's been in a desert place. Anybody ever been in a desert place? Anybody felt like, Lord, what in the world? How long am I going to have to be here? Lord, when am I going to get through this place? If you serve the Lord, I promise you, you will get in the desert place one time or another. Come on. Yeah, but you got to learn something. Hallelujah. See, there's something God's got planned. There's a purpose God has right here. But the says, you ain't going to be in that desert place too much longer because there's a king over here. Ooh, there's a king walking on the king's highway. He's fixing to do something in your life. Come on, y'all. My Lord. There's a king in your driveway. There's a king walking up your path right now. There's a king. His name is Jesus. He's fixing to bring you out of that desert place that you've been in for so long. Come on. He's fixing to move mightily. And it's all because of what? Grace. Everybody say grace. Man, can y'all tell I was about to get excited there for a minute? Oh, somebody help me up in here. Really, really my, my, my family chef has been in a place of hiding. Everybody say hiding. Really, he's hiding for his life because he's afraid. He's, he's afraid, he's scared because Saul's not king no more. His daddy is dead. He's crippled, he can't walk. He's dependent on somebody, a servant to take care of him. He's hiding in a place where he thinks he can't be found. <laughs> Come on, somebody help me up in here now. You ever thought you was in a place where God couldn't find you? God knows where you're at. Whew, hallelujah. He knows what you've been through. Come on. Jeremy, he knows what you've been through. Aren't you glad he didn't leave you there, brother? Ain't you glad he extended a hand of grace, brother, that you didn't deserve, that I didn't deserve, that he just reached out with grace and he brought you out of that desert place to put you in a place where you can be fruitful, where God can use you. Come on. Where living waters began to flow forth through you. Somebody help me up in here. Come on, he's bringing you out. He's, he's showing you. This is, look at verse five. I'm about to get ahead. Then, then King David sent. Oh, Lord. When I looked at that, the Bible says King David sent and fetched him. Fetched him. Come on, y'all say fetched him. He says fetched him out of the house of Markar, the son of Armenia, from Lodenbar. He fetched him out of that desert place. I got to think about that. I said, David, David sent some servants. David sent somebody to get him out of that mess he was in. And I got to think, I said, you know what Jesus did? He sent the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He sent the Holy Ghost to us wherever we was at and fixed us out of that mess. Come on. He fixed me out of the beer joint. He fixed me. Come on. He fixed me. The Spirit of God brought me out of that desert place that I was living in. Jesus sent the Holy Ghost. And said, I can see him now. I can see him talk. He said, Holy Spirit, there he is. Go over there and get him. Woo. See, the Holy Spirit got somebody this morning. Come on. He got you this morning. Come on. He got you. He fetched you out. He knows where you're at. He knows what has you bound. He knows what's keeping you back. He knows what's, what's going on in that desert, that desert place. But Jesus said, I'm not leaving you there. You ain't staying in jail. You're not staying in that place. You're not staying in that desert place. Jesus said, I sent the Holy Ghost to come there. He's coming to get you. Hallelujah. He's going to fix you. He's going to raise you up. He's going to come on the inside of you. He's going to make something out of you. You're going to be like a garden now. My Lord, hallelujah. You're going to have fruit growing. You're going to have a river flowing. Good Lord, somebody help me. You mean he can do that with somebody who can't walk? Oh, somebody help me now. What God? Come on. See, I love it because God takes the foolish things of the world to combine the wise. He ain't looking for somebody who's got their act together. He ain't looking for somebody who thinks they know it all. He's looking for somebody who don't know nothing. Hallelujah. He's looking for somebody who can put something 
name on the inside of it. That's the problem today. Everybody thinks they got it all. Everybody thinks they know it all, boy. I got it together. I know this. I know that. Let me tell you, we don't know nothing. We're just scratching the surface. Good Lord, if you could see what God has in plan for those that love him. If you could see that path that he don't show us. My Lord, hallelujah. Can he use somebody who's crippled? You better believe he can. Can he move in a heart and raise that person up who's crippled, who can't even walk? You better believe he can. Can he use a drunk? You better believe he can. Can he, you, can he use an ex-drug addict? You better believe he can. Can he do? Can he use anybody who's been in the grossest sin that you can even think of? You better believe he can. Because he's God. He can extend grace. He can do what he wants. Nobody can stop his hand. Somebody help me up in here. Nobody can stop the hand of God. He can do what he wants to do. If he took a man named Paul who was killing Christians. Come on, y'all. Who was sitting there holding clothes of Christians who were being persecuted. And he can knock him off his high horse. Guess what? He can knock us off our high horse and use us any way he wants to. Somebody help me up in here. And that's what he did with Paul. Paul. Amen. He said, Paul, all that stuff you thought you knew, you don't know nothing. Let me teach you something. Let me tell you who your best teacher is. It ain't a school. It ain't a church. It ain't a preacher. It ain't a pastor. It ain't an evangelist. It ain't somebody on TV. Your best teacher, the greatest teacher you can ever have, the most wonderful teacher you'll ever have is the spirit of the living God. He's the best teacher. He's the, oh, Lord God, he's awesome. He's wonderful. He'll teach you. He'll mold you. He'll show you. He'll, oh, Lord, he'll lead you. He'll guide you. He's the greatest teacher we can all have. Can I get another amen up in here? Now, he's fetched him just like the Lord has fetched us. By the Spirit of God and brought us out of that desert place. Look at verse number six. Six says, when Mephibosheth, well, let's stop right there for a minute because I hadn't said this, have I? Does anybody know what his name means? Guess what? Oh, Lord, I love this part. Mephibosheth, his name means, this is what it's, this is, imagine being tagged with a name like this. His name means the shameful thing. That's what his name means, the shameful thing. It's a shameful thing. Can you imagine having a name that means the shameful thing? He's crippled. He can't walk. What good is he? Come on, anybody ever been there? Yeah, I've been surrounded by drugs and alcohol. What good is he? He ain't no good. That's all he's going to be all of his life is a drunkard. And a, a doper, come on, y'all, somebody help me. I've heard that before. Come on, that's not that he ain't good for nothing. Come on, his name means the shameful thing. Has anybody in here ever done something shameful? Come on, come on. Has anybody ever done something shameful? You can't even change it. You can't go back. You can't do nothing about it. I've done some shameful things in my life. I'm not proud of them. Some of them you'll never know. I'll never tell you about them. It's awful. Can I get another amen up in here? God knows about them. He knows about everything. Things you do before you before he extends that hand of grace, my Lord. Here he is. His name means he's the shameful thing. And yet David is looking for him. David fetching him out. Don't think David is stupid, y'all. He's a very smart man. He knows what names mean. But just, let, me tell you, let me tell you this. It don't matter what kind of name people tag on you. <laughs> That's why every one of us in here we got a new name written down in glory. Hallelujah. He gonna change our names because he might not like what people named you. Somebody help me up in here. Good Lord. He, he gonna change some of our names. So don't worry about what kind of name somebody tags on you. I've had a bunch of names that wasn't really my name that I was given by my mom and dad. But I've had a lot of names uh, spoken to me. Come on. Does it really matter? It don't matter. It don't matter what somebody calls you or what somebody says to you. You know, the only ones who get offended when somebody calls them something they ain't got no business calling them are those who got their feelings on their shoulder. Come on, get your feelings off your shoulder. Don't worry about what somebody says to you. Just, just know this. When somebody says something or calls you a name, just think about this, y'all. Any spirit. They're so stupid, they don't even know what they're talking about. That ain't my name. Don't receive it, y'all. I'm trying to tell you whatever somebody says to you or about you, don't let it get you tore up. You ought to know better than that. You know who you are. Come on, you're a king's kid. You belong to the Lord. You've been cleansed by the blood, filled with the Spirit of the living God. God done fetched you out of London Bar. 
Come on, y'all. I'm putting, a, putting some grace, extending grace to you. This extends some grace to that person that's, it, it, that's ignorant. Don't know no better. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible talks about ignorant people, foolish people. Don't let them. Don't let them bother you. Here's what I want you to see, y'all. His name, the shameful thing. Nobody really wants him. He's hiding. Nobody wants to deal with him because he, he don't fit into their agenda. He don't fit into their program. Come on, y'all. I love it when Matthew comes up in here in this wheelchair. I love it when Matthew comes up in here. Whether he ever gets out of that wheelchair walks or not, it don't really matter. I know one day, y'all, he'll be walking the streets of heaven, the streets of heaven. Can I get an amen up in here? But see, I love it when he comes up in here. Some people don't want somebody in a wheelchair or this or that to come into their service because, oh, we believe in healing and everybody comes in and got to be healed and you got somebody in their wheelchair and they ain't healed. Well, the God ain't in it. Boy, ain't that a bunch of hogwash? Ain't that foolish, y'all? That's about the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yet it goes on. God's got reasons for what he does or what he allows to be done. All we got to do is continue to pray, continue to believe, and know that one day in God's timing, he's going to walk, he's going to talk, he's going to shout the streets of heaven. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Yeah, y'all give God some praise for that one. Amen. Praise God. Not to take away from anything, y'all, let me tell you this. This Saturday upstairs, we had a woman who could not hear for I don't know how many years, and God, boom, opened up her ears and she could hear this Saturday. Give God praise for that, amen. Her ear was opened up. She started weeping and crying because God healed her ear. Ain't that awesome, y'all? Praise the name of Jesus. That's the Lord we serve. But here's what I want you to say. Nobody really wants him. Nobody but something. Something. God wants this. Oh, my Lord, I messed his name all up, didn't it? God wants him, y'all. God wants to use somebody like David. David extends some grace. See, what happened is God's grace found him. God's grace fetched him. God's grace is going to restore him. Yes. How many in here has lost something in your life? Come on, that's hard and precious. It could be fine. It could be a lot of things that we've lost that, that the enemy has taken. Guess what? We serve a God of restoration. Yes. He restores he, he restores relationships. He, he restores he, he rest, he's a restoring God. And I'm about to get ahead. Let me give you this. Look at verse 7, y'all. Here it is. Verse 7 is packed full. This is going to be the last scripture. So y'all hold on here with me right here. Verse 7. David said unto him, he's looking at Mephibosheth. He's looking at a man who's crippled. He's looking at a man most people just overlook. Don't even care. And David says this. He says to Mephibosheth, fear not. Listen to this. For I will surely show you Kindness. There's that word for grace again. Grace for Jonathan, your father's sake. Number one, he says, Mephibosheth, don't you fear. Let me just say this. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. If you fear anything the man can do to you, you need to quit doing it because God didn't give you that. Fear comes from the enemy. Come on. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. But he says, Mephibosheth, don't you fear. I'm not here to kill you. I'm not here to wipe you out. I'm here to extend some grace. Come on, fear, Mephibosheth. Fear, listen, look at it. He says, fear not. I'm going to show you grace. I'm fixing to do something that's way beyond you, that you don't even, you know, I'm going to show you grace that Mephibosheth, you don't really, and he knows it. He knows he don't deserve it. He said, I'm doing it even for your father Jonathan's sake. Do you know why the father, why God blesses us and why he moves in our life? The things he does is because of his son's sake. Yes. For the sake of Jesus. God moves in our life because of what Jesus did for us, church. He paid the price. He laid his life down. He shed his blood. God moves in our lives because, hey, Lord, I trust you, Jesus. You're my Lord and my Savior. You're my everything. You're Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Hallelujah. And God begins to move for the sake of Jesus in our lives. Now, not only is God, through David, extending grace, 
He says, Mashiach says, he's also, look at the scripture here. He says, number two, he says, I will restore you all the land of Saul, your father. Now, how many in here has the enemy took something from you? Come on, y'all. Land, finances, whatever it may be. We've all lost some things in here. God says he's the restoring God. Y'all, we lost, you know, even Adam lost his force, our inheritance. <coughs> Come on, he lost our inheritance, but guess what? Jesus brought it back. <laughs> Put God in inheritance. It's going to be restored. Everything, y'all, I love the word. The word of God says this. Uh, Joel 2, 25, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. God is a restoring God. There's some people who's lost finances in here. Guess what? God's going to restore them. Just get ready. <laughs> Come on, y'all get ready to re receive your finances back. Come on, God don't want you broke and busted. He wants you to be a blessing in somebody's life. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Is there anything the enemy's taking, even in the finances? Oh, come on. It, God's going to bring it back. He said, I'm going to restore. He wants you to be a lender, not a borrower. That's right, He wants you, come on. He wants you to be a lender, not a borrower. If you still borrow money, stop. Let me say that one more time. If you still borrow money, stop. Don't borrow no more money. Become a lender. Begin to lend. And when you lend to God's people, guess what? You do it without interest. Let's get to that place, y'all. Lend to God's people without interest. Don't charge no interest. Got a good amen up in here. If somebody needs a, a helping hand, come on. Net needs $5,000 here, Net. Give it back when you can. Don't matter. Come on, y'all. Don needs $100,000. Get to it. Don, here it is. Pay it back when you can. See, you don't do that when God blesses you. How many knows that's going to happen? Get ready. Come on, y'all. Get ready. Everything, come on, come on, come on. That's the least thing I'm going to do. Can I get a name up in here? Verse 20 says, You will eat in plenty, be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. God is moving. He's going to restore. He is a restoring God, and he'll restore everything that the enemy has taken. Now, and he says in that verse, my people shall never be ashamed. Now, check this out. Then David says to Mephibosheth here, look at the third thing, y'all. When I see this, I really got excited. He says, and you, Mephibosheth, who's crippled and can't walk, you shall eat bread at my table continually. Good Lord, did y'all think about that? He said, you'll eat bread. David is saying, you're going to eat bread at my table every single day. Did you know that the Lord has prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies, even in a, we're in a place? He's prepared a table. We're sitting at the table of the Lord. He's put the table out there. All we got to do is pull up a seat, have a seat, and let God feed us his food. Somebody hit me up in here continuously. See, he said, you're going to get, good Lord. He's telling a man who's crippled, you're going to get to eat in the king's house. Do y'all know we're eating in the king's house? Good Lord, somebody help me up there. Can y'all see what I'm seeing? We're eating at the king's table. We're eating with the Lord. We're eating the food that he's dishing out. Good can you see that, y'all? Spiritually speaking right now, I know when we get to heaven, God has a seat with your name on it. Ken's got a seat. Can't nobody sit in it. You know why? It's his seat. James has a seat. Vince has a seat. Fred has a seat. Carolyn has a seat. Mike has a seat. Come on. Earl has a seat. When we get to heaven, we know we got a seat at God's table. But I'm talking about here right now, spiritually speaking, we have a seat and the Lord said, come on, son, sit down with me. Come on, do like Mary did. Mary and Martha, Martha's too busy right now. She ain't picked a better thing. Mary and Martha, Martha wanted to start cooking a meal. Guess what? It wasn't time to cook. It was time to listen. Sometimes you got to, you, you got to get to some discernment to know when it's time to cook and know when it's time to listen. Y'all, come on, somebody help me up in here. It was time for Mary to listen. She sat down with Jesus and she began to listen. Y'all, we've got to sit down at the table and we've got to say, Lord, here I am. Speak to me, Lord. Give me some of this good old food. Oh, Lord, I'm ready for that T-bone, Lord. Give me a bite of that T-bone from your word. Come on, somebody help me up in here. See, you, you will never get no T-bone steak until you sit down at the table with the Lord because he's the one who gives it to you. He's the one who prepares the meal. Come on, Lord, somebody help me up in here. He prepares the meal for you. All you've got to do is sit down with him and begin to eat. Now, he told Mephibosheth, you're going to be eating with me 
at the king's table every day. Think about that for a minute, y'all. Because the same is true of us. He didn't deserve it. We don't deserve it. He had nothing. We had nothing. We could offer God nothing. He couldn't offer the king nothing, y'all. Nothing. Give him a fibbish to offer the king. Nothing. But to sit down and eat. So what you going to do? I'm going to sit down and eat. <laughs> Somebody help me up in here. Sit down with the Lord. We were really, at one time in our life, y'all, we were hiding just like my Mephibosheth. Hiding. But the king, King Jesus, set his heart on you. And when he set his heart on you, he extended a hand of grace. He couldn't leave you where you was at. He didn't want you to be in that desert place. He wanted you to sit at his table. Let me tell you something about sitting at the Lord's table, y'all. This is a spiritual thing. God showed me that this morning when I was reading. When Mephibosheth was sitting at the king's table and the tablecloth was hanging down, couldn't nobody see he was crippled. <clears throat> Lord, when God has a tablecloth of grace <clears throat> over the table and you sitting at the table, which all of us ought to be sitting at the table, we don't see one another's faults. Come on. We don't see where that person is at. We just see where it can be. Oh, Lord, he's sitting with me at the table. We're sitting at the table of Jesus. We don't begin to look at people's faults. Hallelujah. Because we all look the same. Glory be to God. We're all covered by the blood. The tablecloth is over the table, covering up the legs. See, that's the way God sees us, y'all. There ain't no big eyes or big use up in here. Somebody help me. We all sitting at that table. Come on. You have a place. I have a place. We get in that place. When we in our right place, we ain't jealous of nobody. Come on, because it don't matter. I want, oh Lord, my Lord, I want God to use everybody in here. And God's using all of us, just get in your right place. Can I get an amen up in here? Okay, we're about through. God's grace, y'all, takes you, this is important, as you are. Crippled, can't even walk. I love that song. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Can't even walk crippled. God's grace says it don't matter. Moses tried to argue with him. I can't talk, Lord. God knows you can't talk. He made your mouth. If he called you, he'll fix it. Come on. He'd do whatever he wants to do. He insisted he'd give him Aaron. He'd give him a mouthpiece. Give him his brother. Got to do whatever's got to be done. David restored Mephibosheth, y'all, from a place of barrenness to a place of honor. Can you see that? God has brought you from a place of barrenness to a place of honor. Sitting at the king's table. A crippled man in a barren land to a place of plenty in the king's house. Let me tell you all this. Everybody who's sitting at the king's table, you got it all. <laughs> Come on, you don't need nothing else. Come on. You got it all. What do we want? God, we're sitting at the king's table. We got everything we need. Why do we get so hung up on stuff, y'all? When I'm sitting there with the Lord, I'm at his table, and the Lord says, here it is. Here. You got all you need? Yes. Don't you? Come on, good Lord. I could go into another land there. We won't go in there. David adopted, y'all, Mephibosheth into his family. Yes. Look what God has done. He adopted us into his family. Yes. Set us down at his table, and he feeds us food that will sustain us and give us life. Yes. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Mephibosheth, his disability, oh, Lord, this is good, y'all. His disability was just a reminder of God's grace. Yes. A reminder. So listen to me. Don't let anything stop you. Just let it be a reminder. Oh, Lord. Lord, that's just a reminder of your grace. Yes. Don't let it stop you, church. Yes. Come on. Yes. I mean, but, but Fibbishev could have said, I ain't going to your table. I'm not going to your house. I don't want no part of it. Don't let it stop you. He ain't 
worthy, I ain't worthy. Don't let it stop you. Let God put you where he wants to put you. Hallelujah. Let him place you where he wants to place you. Let him raise you up to where he wants to raise you up at. Come on, church. Sit down where he wants you to sit down at. Be where he wants you to be. Don't worry about anybody else. Now, the last point, and this is it right here, y'all. Here's what I really love. It don't matter who you are or what your name is. We all have a seat at the Lord's table. So don't worry about who you are. Don't worry about what your name is. Don't worry about what people call you. You got a seat. I encourage you to sit down at his table. Sit down at the Lord's table. Eat some good food. Oh, let God feed you. Let the Lord feed you with what he wants to give you. See, he all, we don't all eat the same thing. Dana don't eat red meat. Guess what? I do. Dana don't eat barbecue or, or, or what am I thinking of pork. Guess what? I do. Okay? So we don't all eat the same thing, but God knows our appetite. He knows what he has for you. He knows I like a T-bone steak. So he gives me a T-bone steak, spiritually speaking, y'all. Come on, somebody help me up in here. And see, what's a T-bone steak to me might be a, uh, like a uh, salmon to you. That's right, daughter, because she loves salmon. So God's giving her that salmon of, her, of his word. Somebody help me up in here. We all have a seat, and he gives us exactly what we need. Can I get an amen up in here? Can y'all stand up and give God a clap of praise? Come on. Just give God a clap. This is it right here, y'all. Oh, yeah. Give God a praise. I want to do this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, I pray that y'all look at grace and different than you ever have. Three things, and this is it right here, y'all. Because this is a message of grace, God's grace. Here's what we ought to do, y'all. Thank you, Lord. Here's my prayer. Here's what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord, for finding me when I wasn't looking. Amen. Let me say that again. Thank you, Lord, for finding me when I wasn't looking. Oh, somebody. Number two, y'all ready? Thank you, Lord, for loving me when I wasn't worthy. Thank you, Lord, for loving me when I was not worthy. Number three, y'all. Thank you, Lord, for making me yours when I sure didn't deserve it. God, what can, what can you put on that? Wow, Lord, what grace, y'all. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. I didn't deserve it. Y'all, we, we didn't deserve it. But God did it anyway. You see, that's grace, church. That's grace. Now, that's what God has extended to us. And that's what God has shown us with a king named David who extended the same kind of grace that God has extended to David. Come on. The same kind of grace David began to, to walk in. In church, I believe that's what God wants to do with us. See, he don't want to just give us his grace and we hoard it up and say, okay, well, thank you, Lord. You did it for me. I ain't worried about nobody else. See, that's the wrong kind of attitude, church. What he's done in me, we extend to somebody else. We say, Felix, you a man of God, brother. God's going to use you mightily. Come on, church. We extend grace because of the grace he's given us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I thank you right now.